The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. All right, so uh, let's get started. So today, uh, very happy to have you here. Uh, we are going to talk about, uh, continue our discussion on the two-dimensional and three-dimensional waves. Okay, so as I mentioned before, there are two interesting situations which we can actually increase the dimension, right? So for example, I can have all the objects oscillating in just one dimension or one direction, but I change the, 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 the way I place all those objects uh, on, in, the, in, the, in the space. For example, I can have particles which are arranged in two or three dimensions you know, arrays, and uh, we were talking about how to understand this kind of system, and uh, all those objects are oscillating in just one direction, for example, up and down in one direction. Okay, that's actually one, one thing which we can, one, one uh, method we can increase the, the dimension. There's another interesting uh, example which we will talk about today is to uh, change the direction of the oscillation, even rotate the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the electromagnetic uh, 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 waves, for example. And how, how can we achieve that? And how do we understand this kind of phenomena that's actually going to be covered by the lecture today, okay? So before uh, we uh, move uh, forward, we will uh, have a short review on what we have learned from last lecture. And uh, uh, this is actually uh, what we discussed. Uh, if I have two materials, the left hand side and the right hand side are two different kinds of materials uh, or uh, uh, very thin uh, membranes. And if I have an incident wave, okay, com coming into uh, the intersection of these two uh, 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 coming into the boundary of these two uh, materials, which is says uh, x equal to zero, as we discussed last time. And basically, uh, the boundary condition require that uh, in order to make sure that the membranes doesn't break, okay? That means the k vector, the projection in the y direction of the k vectors has to be the same. That means the projection of the wave in the, in the y direction, which is along this line, the wavelengths of all the incident refracted and the transmitted wave, the wavelengths should be all the same. Otherwise, I can change y and make the membranes break or break the boundary condition. Okay, so that's actually the first thing which we learned from the, the math we were doing last time. And also, the k value are not arbitrary, right? So we were already assuming that all the three uh, uh, waves, all the three prime waves are oscillating at the same frequency, right? If they are oscillating at different frequency, it doesn't work, right? Because I can change time, then make the membranes break, right? So therefore, all the three prime waves will be oscillating at the same uh, frequency, omega, okay? And according to this formula, so we have defined n, which is actually the refraction index, which is equal to some constant c divided by the speed of, uh, uh, of, the, of the propagation, the phase velocity of the left hand side material. And we also can define n prime, which is actually equal to c, uh, the same uh, constant, divided by uh, v prime, which is the speed of propagation of the right hand side material. And uh, according to uh, the dispersion relation, we can calculate what will be the length of the k if omega is given, right? The omega for the left hand side and right hand side, refracted, transmitted, and the uh, incident wave should be the same. Therefore, I can immediately write down what will be the length of the k vector, and that means uh, k, uh, the, the length of the k vector will be equal to n times omega over c, right? So, C over N is actually just V, right? So, so basically, it's just uh, the non-dispersive uh, 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 median uh, dispersion relation. And also, you can go ahead and write down what will be the length of the K prime, and that is actually determined by N prime omega over C. Okay? So 
So based on these two uh, interesting information, what we can conclude is that, huh, that means k, k prime and the kr cannot be arbitrary. They have to be aligned in, uh, to form a specific pattern. The pattern is that the projection in the y direction should be the same, and also uh, at the same time, the length of the k vector is determined by the refraction uh, index. Okay? So once we fix all that and uh, put them all together, we can conclude that based on the projection in a y direction, we will conclude that theta will be equal to theta r, where theta is actually the incident angle, and the theta r is the refraction uh, angle, which is uh, describing the direction of the refractive wave. And uh, also, the second very interesting information we, we learned is that uh, based on the boundary condition, we can conclude that n sine theta will be equal to n prime sine theta prime. So that's actually Snell's law, which uh, some of you actually learned from the high school days or uh, from uh, 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 earlier lectures in physics. And these two interesting uh, 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 results uh, forms the basis of uh, geometrical optics or, uh, laws. That's uh, the, the two of the most important laws we learn from geometrical optics. So that's actually uh, uh, give you some example uh, uh, and uh, give you some more feeling about what we are we talking about. So, so what we are talking about is that if I have an incident wave, okay, coming into the, uh, uh, this uh, boundary, okay, and uh, the incident angle is theta 1, okay, what I would expect based on what we have just derived Okay, is that the theta r, the refracted uh, wave uh, direction, uh, will, uh, the, the, the refractive wave uh, uh, angle, the refraction angle will be equal to the incident angle according to what we have just derived. I was just rotating this by 90 degree. And uh, also we can calculate what will be the theta 2 according to Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equal to n2 sine theta 2. And if I continue and the propagate uh, or, uh, the, the, the incident wave, okay, here I assume that N2 is larger. If you have a larger refraction uh, index, that means if I, you have a larger refraction index, that means the speed of propagation is smaller. Okay, larger n value give you a smaller speed of propagation. Therefore, you can see that the, the wave front, which is actually the peak value, uh, the, the, the position of the peak, actually got delayed compared to the original projection. Okay, and you can see that the red line is actually really what, what you will see uh, in the second median. And then we can also continue to propagate, and you will see that, huh, interesting, that means the, the plane wave will change uh, direction because of the matching boundary condition, the, uh, the membranes that don't break. You can see that the, the, the peak position match, right? Uh, from the median number one and median number two, the peak position, which is the, 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 the position of the line, match. Uh, and uh, also, uh, due to the slower speed of propagation, the plane wave actually change direction. Okay, so that's actually how we actually can understand the mathematical result we, we derived last time uh, 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 by uh, this uh, interesting example. Okay, so that's actually consider a situation which is uh, maybe a little bit interesting to you. Uh, so what will happen if I now shoot light from inside some uh, material which delay the light uh, slightly, for example, n1 uh, is equal to 1.5. Okay, I, I shoot something through uh, the material. Then, uh, and uh, and the second material I have have higher speed of uh, light, which is actually uh, having the speed of light equal to that at the vacuum. Okay, in, in the vacuum case. Okay, so in this example, I have n1 greater than n2. Okay, since n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. 
Okay, so now I can calculate what will be the resulting theta two, right, according to this equation. So the resulting theta two will be sine theta two will be equal to n one over n two sine theta one. Okay, in this case, n one is greater than n two, therefore this term is greater than one, right? And at this case, in this case, actually this ratio is equal to one point five. Okay. So this is actually pretty interesting. That means, OK, this factor is actually greater than 1. I have sine theta 1, uh, which is multiplied in this factor. OK, so that means if I increase theta, OK, theta 1, if I increase theta 1, at some point, I will not be able to get the theta 2, right? Because theta 2 will be. Uh, uh, arc sine 1.5 sine theta 1. And at some point, 1.5 sine theta 1 will be greater than 1. Then I don't have a theta 2, which can satisfy this equation. So what, 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 what will happen? Maybe the whole system explode. I don't know. Right? So we are going to do a simple experiment uh, uh, to see what is going to happen. So before we do this, kind of dangerous experiment. We are going to turn this light off. And be prepared. Hope everybody will survive. <laughs> so here I have a laser, which is actually pointing, uh, from, from, uh, shooting a laser uh, 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 beam uh, through uh, uh, this uh, uh, tank of water. So this is water with uh, n value roughly 1.33, and outside of the water is air, right? So the speed of propagation is roughly uh, equal to the speed of, uh, of, the, of the light is actually roughly equal to, the, to C. So n value is actually roughly 1, okay? So that's actually exactly the situation we are looking for, and let's turn on this experiment careful. Wow, look at this. You can see that. Here, there was no light coming out, right? Why is that? Because of the mathematics, right? The mathematics say that, OK, sorry, guys. Theta 2 doesn't work, OK? Therefore, there will be no light really coming out. You can see my, my hand, OK? You can see the light here, right? When I put my hand here, it's not burning my hand, but that is OK, all right? And you can see that nothing really comes out. And all the energy are bounced back into the water. OK? The same thing also happened here. You can see that the, the, the light is actually bouncing back and forth and uh, moving in toward the left hand side direction until it passed through uh, here. Maybe it doesn't, because uh, it's actually still bouncing around inside, uh, inside uh, this tank. OK? So, so, so the good news is that no explosion like what we have here. Okay. The interesting thing we found is that all the energy will be bounced back uh, if you have large enough in certain angle in this situation. As you can see from here, that uh, you can see that the, all the all the lights. Uh, uh, energy are uh, bounced back into water. So that's actually very, very interesting. And that means we can probably make use of this property to send light and, uh, and uh, through uh, 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 some large M material, right? So that's actually how actually um, uh, optical fiber works. OK, so, so basically, you can actually uh, shoot the light into the optical fiber, and the, the light is going to be bouncing back and forth between the boundaries inside the, the fiber, and then you can actually send those information through light uh, by this kind of mechanism. OK, so that's actually how the optical fiber actually works. And the, here, we do have um, a setup, which I have uh, light here. OK, shooting light into the optical fiber. And I have paper here, which I should uh, try to block part of the light. OK, so you can see 
from here, you can see the text which I put on the on the uh, on the paper actually because some of the light is actually blocked by the uh, by the by this paper, the text on the paper, and uh, and this light actually goes through this optical fiber, okay, and the sh and the continue and propagate and it got captured by the camera, okay. So you can see what is actually. Uh, can you read loud what is actually written there? Can you see it? Love. The exam <laughs> is, oh, no, 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 transmission interrupted. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So I'm sorry it didn't work, but uh, it worked in the beginning, right? OK, so you can see that this is a wonderful way to send optical signal, and we actually do that, right? We send signal from US to Asia through all those crazy lines under, under the sea, right? So that's really cool. And the finally, before we change the topic, I'm sure that you enjoy uh, doing the, the practice uh, in your PSA number eight. We are going to be uh, uh, going to learn that, okay, this is actually highly related to a uh, beautiful phenomena we see in your daily life. The, the rainbow is actually really uh, related to Snell's law, and then you are going to actually solve this problem uh, uh, in, in the PSET. Okay? All right. So any questions so far related to Snell's law and, and, uh, and the refraction index, et cetera? All right? So if not, we will go, through, uh, go ahead and, uh, and talk about the second uh, example. Uh, the second example is that, okay, instead of introducing more uh, uh, objects in, in this array, we could uh, change the direction of the oscillation as a function of time and see what is going to happen. So the direction of, for example, the direction of the, uh, the electric, uh, electric uh, field, I can make it rotate or change as a function of time. And that's actually called circularly polarized wave. And that means we are going to talk about polarization uh, today, okay? Before we start the real the lecture, okay, what we are going to do is that, I will quote a, a word from Feynman, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is, it doesn't matter how smart you are, but if it doesn't agree with this experiment, it's wrong. Okay, so that's actually a very important lesson. And uh, I have been telling you that electromagnetic wave is predicted to be oscillating in the transverse direction, as you can see from that little figure, right? So if the direction of propagation is to the right-hand side, so that means electric field and the magnetic field can only be oscillating in a plane which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation, okay? That's actually what we have learned from Maxwell's equation. Okay, but all those things are theory, right? Can you, do you believe, believe those theory? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe light is actually like oscillating in the longitudinal direction, right? If you are a physicist, you should ask this question, right? Maybe you find something which is actually inconsistent with the theory, then you feel really happy, right? Okay? So the question we are trying to answer is, how do we know the electromagnetic wave are in uh, transverse waves, right? And we are going to walk through a few examples and to convince ourselves that, right? okay, maybe that's the case. Maybe we have some hint. Of course, we cannot prove 100%, but uh, very likely this is probably the case, okay? So let's go ahead and start the discussion today. So um, instead of adding one more dimension uh, by arranging materials, we can actually uh, discuss how the direction of the uh, oscillation uh, of the, okay, how, how the, the pointing direction of the electric field change or, uh, got, uh, or uh, depends as a function of time, right? So in order to do that, I need to remind you how to write down uh, electric field for the electromagnetic wave. So in a previous lecture, if I 
organize myself so that uh, the electromagnetic field is going in the z direction, okay? The electromagnetic field is going in the z direction, okay? All right, if I, I choose that, then basically electric field as a function of z and, uh, and, and the time will be equal to the real part of some vector psi zero times exponential i k z minus omega t. If I assume that this electric field is actually the electromagnetic field is actually propagating toward the z direction, right? So by now you should you should get used to this already. This is actually going to the positive z direction. Okay, where I intentionally write uh, psi zero there is actually a vector which contains two components, psi one in the x direction and the psi two in the y direction. Okay? And uh, you can see from here that you can immediately uh, recognize that this can be written as a superposition of two waves, right? So one is actually electromagnetic wave with electric field in the x direction, and the other wave, the other electromagnetic wave, is actually oscillating with electric field in the y direction and with amplitude psi 2, okay? So that is actually um, uh, what you can actually uh, uh, get Im immediately because of the superposition uh, 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 principle, okay? So it's a, actually a superposition of two electromagnetic wave. And of course, I, in this case, I take the real part of this vector, right? So in general, psi 1 can be a1 exponential i phi 1, and in general, psi 2 can be a2 exponential i phi 2, okay? Uh, so, so in this uh, notation, basically, uh, uh, we write everything in, uh, in terms of uh, vector, and uh, Sometimes we actually write uh, those things in, uh, in terms of metrics, right? And uh, that actually uh, sometimes serve a better uh, a purpose for calculation. So we can also rewrite this thing in, in the uh, matrix form. So I have a matrix E, which have two components, EX and the EY. And this is actually equal to a real part of some Z vector, uh, sorry, Z, uh, mat uh, Z uh, matrix which also contain two uh, components times a, a scalar, which is actually exponential i k z minus omega t, okay? So you, as you can see, uh, I am now just setting up the language we want to speak, right? So that we communicate, right? So uh, in this case, the z uh, uh, matrix is written as psi one and psi two, which are the two components. One is actually in the x direction, the other one is in the, in the y direction. Okay? And uh, we are going to use this language and see uh, what can we learn from, from there. So you can see that we have been uh, doing, uh, uh, we, are, we have been discussing electromagnetic wave which is propagating toward the positive z direction. And I have two components which I can have x direction uh, electric field and y direction electric field, okay? So um, let me uh, try to go through some example and uh, see what we can actually learn from this. So, so the first example I would like to talk about is that if I, I, if I have two waves, E1, the first wave is actually E0 cosine Kz minus omega t in the x direction, okay? And then the second wave is E2 equal to E0 cosine Kz minus omega t in the y direction, okay, be careful. The, the direction of the electric field is different for the first and the second prime wave, okay? And uh, if you notice, uh, that, uh, if you actually notice from this expression, these two waves are in phase, right? 
So in phase means that they reach maxima at the same time, OK? OK, so in this case, if I add two uh, waves uh, with no phase difference, what is going to happen? So I, I'm going to have an E vector, which you say should be E1 plus E2, right? And uh, if I plot the locus of this kind of electric field, OK, in the two-dimensional uh, space, x and y, OK, so now I am plotting, so I am fixing uh, my z position, for example, at 0. And I see, I would like to see how the locus of the E vary as a function of time, OK? In this case, since E1 and D2 have the same amplitude, which is E0, and also they have no phase difference. That means they reach maxima simultaneously. So that means uh, originally, for example, in the beginning, the electric field is 0. And this electric field projection to the xy plane will increase okay, until some maxima. At the maxima, this will be E0. The x and y projection will be E0. Then it goes back right, to minus E0, minus E0 in the x and y direction projection. And it goes back and forth. Okay. So in this case, this is actually still not very different from uh, what we had discussed before, right? Because the electric field is actually still oscillating up and down. But the difference is that it's not oscillating at the x axis or y axis, but in the axis which is actually 45 degree uh, with respect to the x or y axis, OK? And now we can do an exercise to write it down in the matrix notation. OK, now, now I have this E matrix will be equal to the real part of E0, E0. And the both E0s are real, exponential i kz minus omega t. And, and basically, I can conclude that z will be equal to E0, E0, and this will be E0, 1, 1. OK? In this kind of situation, the electric field is varying as a function of time. The projection to xy plane, OK, is a line. When that happens, we call it linear the polarized. OK, so this is actually just a name. But the, indeed, the locus of the electric field on the xy plane is a linear line. OK, so that actually we call it linearly polarized. OK, and of course, you can uh, say, OK, this is actually just one example, right? I can have many, many examples which you also create a line uh, when you plot the locus, right? So for example, I can have z equal to e0, 1, 0. Can somebody tell me what does that notation mean? That's right. So that means you only have uh, electric field in the x direction, right? So this is the x direction, this is y direction. And this is also linearly polarized, OK? Of course, you can have very similarly E0, 0, 1. And in this case, you only have electric field in the y direction, OK? Just want to tell you my language, OK, I'm introducing here, OK? So that we communicate. And uh, of course, you can have z equal to E0 cosine theta sine theta. What does that mean? This means that when I plot the locus on the xy plane, I'm going to have a straight line still. But now the, the angle between this line and the x-axis is going to be theta. Okay. So all those examples, you can see that 
in the first case, the oscillation is in the x direction, and uh, in the second case, the uh, oscillation is in the y direction, and then in the third case, it can be in an arbitrary line, theta angle away from the x-axis, right? So all those things are linearly polarized, okay? So, so far, there's no, uh, nothing should surprise you, right? So that's actually what we have been talking about. And you can say that, oh, Professor D, you were just not doing a very good job. You didn't rotate the axis right, right? So that, you know, all the electric field in, is in, in, the, in the x direction, right? So in principle, for the discussion of the linear depolarized wave, you can do a good job by rotating your uh, axis so that you only have one component in, in the x direction, okay? So, so, so I say, okay, yes, I agree, but uh, this is useful discussion, right? Okay, all right. So now, maybe you're bored. They have no phase difference, right? So how about we introduce some phase difference and see what will happen? Okay, so now if I have, I consider the second situation. I have E1 is equal to E0 cosine kz minus omega t in the x direction. Now I consider E2, this will be E0 sine kz minus omega t in the y direction, okay? I hope you can see it. And you can see that now they reach the x component and y component electric field they reach maxima at different time because of the phase difference, right? What, how big is the phase difference? Can somebody actually remind me? Yeah, pi over two. Very good, all right. So this, I can write it down as E0 cosine kz minus omega t minus pi over two as you actually already figured out, right? And now I can actually also, again, write it in the language I like, the matrix format, and uh, I can write it down already. Uh, in, uh, before I achieve that, I can write it as a real part of E0 in the x direction plus E0 exponential minus i pi over 2, right? Because this, this uh, minus pi over 2 sign. Uh, the, the uh, factor here, right, for the for the y direction, okay, and all those things are multiplied by exponential i k z minus omega t, right? Both of them are actually oscillating at the same uh, omega uh, omega angular frequency, okay, and you can see that now I can collect this phase difference. Uh, back into uh, a complex factor here, exponential minus i pi over two, okay? And this is a minus i, uh, uh, exponential minus i pi over two is actually just minus i, right? Because exponential, um, uh, yeah, so, so basically you can figure out that it's actually just minus i, right? Okay, so then I can write down my uh, uh, expression for the uh, E matrix. This will look like real part E0, one minus I exponential I kz minus omega t. And uh, in this case, z uh, vector will be one minus I in the language which I introduced uh, today. Okay, everybody is following? I'm going too fast? Okay, very good. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing to plot the locus of the electric field as a function of time on the x, y uh, plane. Okay, so, so now you can see that it's, it's pretty interesting since I have a cosine and sine, okay, I assume that t is equal to zero, z is equal to zero, then I will only have electric field in the x direction, right? 
So this is actually when t is equal to 0. All right? And if I increase time, I fix the z to be equal to 0, OK? If I increase the time, OK, this locus is going to do an interesting thing. It's going to be rotating and until it finish uh, one period. OK, why, why is that happening? Because what I'm plotting is actually the locus of the electric uh, field, right? And you can see that if I set uh, z equal to 0, OK, when z is equal to 0, this will give you e0 cosine omega t in the x direction, and e0 sine omega t in the y direction. OK? So e0 cosine omega t, e0 sine omega t, wow, this reminds you about the previous discussion, right? If you have a cosine and a sine, they work together in different direction. That's going to get you a circle, right? So, so that's actually why in this, uh, uh, in, in, in this locus you see a circle, and it's actually rotating in the, um, in the counterclockwise direction, OK? And uh, the speed of the rotation is related to the omega t. And the, OK, now if I uh, look at uh, increase the time, then this, uh, and then this point is going to be going in the counterclockwise direction, OK? And uh, you may be super surprised. Because what I have been doing is to add two D near the polarized wave to that together. The only thing which I always say the magic I have been doing is to introduce a phase difference. Okay? And you can see that instead of going up and down, up and down as a function of time, now it's actually doing rotation. So what is going to happen is that as a function of time, the direction of the electric field is going to rotate uh, as a function of time. So we call this situation circularly polarized. By the way, because of the initial two components I put in, both of them have amplitude E0, therefore it's circularly polarized, right? I can also try to do something different. For example, I can change the x direction. So the third situation is that I can change the, 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 the first x direction amplitude from E0 to E0 over 2. Then what I'm going to get is something like this. The only thing which I change with respect to 2 is that I change the amplitude of the electric field in the, in the x direction by a factor of 2. OK? Can somebody actually tell me what is going to happen in this situation? What will happen to the locus? OK. Yeah, it's going to switch in, right? So in the x direction, right? Yeah, that's right. Very good. So what you are going to get is that instead of a circle, you get something like this. So, so, so this is the x direction, and this is the y direction, and the, this will give you a maxima x equal to e0 over 2. And uh, of course, the original direction in the uh, original amplitude in the y direction didn't change. And that gives you a maximum value of e0. And this becomes an elliptical, uh, elliptically polarized wave. OK? So in this kind of situation, it's called elliptically polarized. 
how do we actually visualize this situation? OK? So that means, as in the beginning, OK, when the electric field is aligned with the x-axis, OK, it's pointing in the x-axis, it, uh, it has a shorter length, OK? And when it rotates, rotates as a function of time to the y-axis, the amplitude becomes bigger, and it gets smaller again, and the increase again, it becomes bigger. Okay, so, so, so you can see the amplitude is actually changing as a function of time. When you have uh, uh, this kind of situation, they have different amplitude, although they have a fixed phase difference of pi over two. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so if you noticed that there's actually another way to produce elliptical depolarized wave, okay? What we could do is that instead of changing the phase by a factor of pi over two, we can change the phase difference the phase difference can be delta phi, okay, which is the phase difference, can be a different value, arbitrary value, not equal to pi over two or three pi over two. If the delta phi is between the, which is the phase difference, between x and the y direction. EM waves, okay? If the uh, it, it, uh, electric field, okay? If the phase difference is uh, not pi over two or not three pi over two, then you can also create a elliptically polarized wave, okay? So that's actually start from the original uh, uh, figure which when we actually discuss situation number one, okay? Situation number one, I have delta phi, the phase difference equal to zero, right? When that happened, you have a linearly polarized uh, uh, wave, right? Basically, what you are going to get is a line in this uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, space. If I increase, so now I slightly delayed, okay? If I slightly delay the electric field in, uh, in the y direction, okay? So if I slightly delay electric field in the y direction so that delta phi now is greater than one, what is going to happen is that it's going to look like this. This means that they will not reach maxima really simultaneously, there will be because of the phase difference. And uh, you will see that originally, when they, there were no phase difference, you, you will be oscillating back and forth in this blue line. When you increase the delta phi slightly, then you are going to get also an elliptical shape, okay? But now it's tilted uh, 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 with uh, uh, some degree, which is 45 degree. In, in, in this case, okay? So therefore, you can see that now I can also create, this is also an elliptically polarized wave. I can also create elliptically polarized wave by adding two components which they have some slight phase difference, okay? So, so that is actually uh, how actually I can create uh, something which is uh, called uh, circularly polarized or elliptically polarized, okay? Originally, before you come into this class, it may look really completely bizarre that, oh, okay, I can have electric field going up and down as a function of time, but how could I do, rotate this thing, right? Looks really strange. How can I see this from the Maxwell's equation, right? But now you get the idea. Basically, that's because I can now overlap 
two components. Both components individually are linearly polarized. Okay? But if I introduce a phase difference, then the superposition of these two components become something which is actually rotating as a function of time. That's pretty interesting. Okay? So that's actually visualize all what we have learned so far. The first one is linearly polarized. Actually, it doesn't surprise you. That's actually the example which we have been using in the previous lectures. And this is actually the situation of circularly polarized wave. So that's focused on the position, uh, the, 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 uh, the figure at uh, z equal to 0. So you can see that in this case, uh, the direction of the electric field is actually rotating as a function of time. And uh, of course, as we actually discussed, I can actually add to an uh, electric field with different amplitude or introduce slightly different uh, 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 phase, then you will see that not only the direction is changing, but also the amplitude is changing. And it, it that's, uh, in this case, we call it elliptically polarized wave. OK? Any questions so far? Yes. So the magnitude of the wind is constant with time now? Uh, yes. The, uh, the magnitude is actually, uh, yeah, so the, so, so the magnitude or say the intensity is proportional to E squared, right? So it's actually a constant. Okay, so, so now uh, let me add more excitement here. Okay, so now suppose I have a perfect conductor, all right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to introduce some more excitement by shooting this linearly polarized wave through some material, okay? If I have a perfect conductor, uh, okay, where all those strips, okay, I have only strips of perfect conductor instead of a plate, okay? We, we were talking about plate before, right? And the, 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 the lesson we learned is that the plate is going to refract the electromagnetic wave because the electrons on the plate is so busy, it's trying to make sure that the, the electric field in the, in the surface of a plate is equal to zero, right? Because the, all those electrons are really moving around, so that making sure the electric field is canceled, and therefore it's going to refract the, the electromagnetic wave, okay? So how about I actually restrict the direction of the movement of the electron so that it can only move in the, in the horizontal direction, okay? What is going to happen is that in, in, in this case, the electric field is actually oscillating up and down, right? And the electrons see this field, and they will say, oh, no, 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 this is not what we work, okay? This is actually not what we, we are going to vote for, right? And uh, I'm going to rearrange ourselves to compensate that, all right? So, so, and uh, they were asking, can I move? Oh, yes, I can move in the wider, uh, in, a, in a horizontal direction. So they jump up and down, then they can actually cancel this electric, uh, electric field, okay? Therefore, what is going to happen when we have this perfect conductor is that the electromagnetic field is, is going to be bounced back like what we had before when we talk about a metal plate, all right? So that's actually pretty nice. Now, suppose I have another perfect conductor, okay? If I have another perfect conductor, this time, the perfect conductor is arranged such that all those charges can only move inside or outside of the board, okay? Instead of going up and down. Now, I have the incident wave. Okay, which is actually polarized in the in the uh, uh, horizontal direction. Okay, so you can see that this time the electrons are really nervous about this, and the, oh no, I have to do something, but they cannot move up and down. Therefore, what is going to happen is that there will be no cancellation of electric field at this boundary, 
and this uh, polarized wave can pass through this uh, 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 so-called polarizer or perfect conductor without uh, getting uh, uh, stopped or get refracted. Okay, and uh, as you can see that in these two example, I have so-called the easy axis. So you can see that uh, the easy axis, as the name actually tells you, right? The easy axis is the axis which is easy. <laughs> okay. All right. So what does that mean? That means if I have electric field aligned with the easy axis, you will pass through, okay? And the, the easy axis is perpendicular to the direction of the, all those uh, streets I have in the perfect uh, conductor, okay? Let's look at the, 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 the first example tell, tells you that, okay, the electric field is aligned, not aligned with easy axis. That means it's not easy, right? So it's got refracted, oh, life is hard, right? And the second electric field is smarter, it's got aligned with the easy axis. So life is easy, you pass through. Okay, that's actually how I remember this so-called easy axis. Okay, any questions? Okay, so we have been talking about all those craziness of uh, polarized light, okay? And uh, I, I hope that you also have learned about unpolarized light before, right? Most of the lights are unpolarized. For example, light emitted from those light bulbs are not polarized, right? Because every emission of a photon can be aligned in different directions. Right? Therefore, I, okay, as I was talking about, there are infinite number of photons hitting my face and bounce back to your eye, right? All those things are not aligned to the same direction as what we have been discussing before, right? In the case of linear uh, pol polarized wave, it's going to be all, all the electric field is pointing to the same direction. And apparently, those lights hitting my, my face is actually not aligned, and it's actually pointing to random direction. Okay, so that brings me to the fifth situation, which I would like to talk about. The fifth situation is that I could have unpolarized light. Okay, so what do I mean by unpolarized light? That means electromagnetic waves, which were put, produced independently by a large number of uncorrelated source. Okay, you, you may ask. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Unpolarized means that you have a lot of different light source pointing to different angle. Shouldn't it just look like this? So you have pointing this direction, all the direction, all the possible direction, pointing to all different possible directions, like this, right? Shouldn't that diagram actually tell you something about unpolarized light? Life is hard. If everything is aligned and also arriving at the same time like this, okay, what is going to happen? They cancel, right? Because all those things are vectors. If they reach maxima at the same time, this means that they are emitted always at the same time, but in random direction, at the emitted at the same uh, wavelength, then they are going to cancel all each other. So apparently that's actually not what I mean by unpolarized light. What I mean is that they can be pointing to different direction, but the emission time and the wavelength of all those emitted uh, electromagnetic wave can be slightly different. Otherwise, they will just cancel uh, each other completely, okay? Any questions about what I just said? Okay, so very good. So now, what I'm going to do is to show you some examples uh, related to 
uh, polarizer. Uh, before that, I will take a five minute break uh, before we come back to the demonstration. So we will come back at uh, 36. Okay, so uh, welcome back. Uh, so we will continue the discussion of the polarized uh, uh, polarization and the polarized wave and the polarizers. Uh, so uh, last, before that, actually I already uh, introduced the polarizer uh, by the perfect conductor arranged in uh, X direction or Y direction, uh, many, many strips uh, aligned in the X direction and the Y direction. And uh, usually we use a simple diagram like this, a circle and uh, 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 arrow uh, to indicate the easy axis uh, to actually uh, talk, uh, tell you about the property of the polarizer, okay? So in this case, if I have a circle and uh, this, uh, I have an arrow which is actually pointing toward the x uh, axis, okay? In this case, my coordinate system is here. Horizontal is x, vertical is y. That means my easy axis, okay? is actually in the x direction, okay? And I can actually write down what would be the matrix presentation of P0, or which will actually present the effect of this polarizer, okay? The P0 will be a matrix in this, in this form, one, zero, 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 okay? If I have this P0 acting on uh, the Z, Okay, which is actually, for example, I can have the P0 acting on the Z, then basically what I have been doing, what, what, I, what, will, what will happen after the light pass through this polarizer will become Z, Z times multiplied by P0, okay? So, so basically, in the, all this P0 uh, matrix does, okay, is to actually extract the projection of, uh, of the field in the x-axis, okay? But I am just writing it down in the matrix format. And on the other hand, for example, I can have this uh, easy axis, which is uh, uh, 90 degree, which is back to the x-axis, which is in the y direction. Then I usually write this down in the form of p pi over two. This pi over two is actually uh, the angle between the easy axis and uh, the x direction, okay? And uh, in this case, you are going to get 0, 0, 0, 1 because all this uh, matrix actually does is to extract the component which is actually in the y direction, okay? And uh, you can, of course, multiply uh, when you have an incident uh, electromagnetic wave uh, which you can actually uh, extract the polarization uh, z uh, matrix. You just multiply uh, P pi over two and the Z, basically you can actually get the resulting uh, polarization of the uh, electromagnetic field after passing through uh, this polarizer, okay? What is going to happen is that only the Y component will survive, okay? In the case of easy axis aligned in the X direction, only the X component will survive, okay? So let me actually uh, go through a, sh a short example here. So suppose initially I have uh, the electromagnetic field polarized, it's linearly polarized in the y direction, okay? And I have that electromagnetic field passing through a polarizer, which is actually theta degree away from the y-axis, okay? So what is going to happen is that all the component, which is actually uh, all the component which is actually parallel to the axis, survive. All the component of this uh, 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 this uh, all the projected uh, component in the axis perpendicular to the easy axis. Okay, didn't make it because the electrons are going to be oscillating up and down like crazy to compensate and then refract that component, okay? So what is going to happen is that after passing through the easy axis, okay, the direction of the, uh, of the polarization will be altered such that it's actually in line with the polarizer, the, the easy axis of the polarizer, okay? So you can see that after passing through this uh, polarizer, 
the direction of the polarization, this is actually still linearly polarized, okay? The direction actually changed by uh, theta degree. And also, the amplitude also changed because only the component parallel to the EZ axis survived. Therefore, e, e, uh, e vector become e, uh, the magnitude of the E vector become uh, E zero cosine of uh, cosine theta. And therefore, the amplitude of the light got reduced. It become I zero cosine theta, theta square because the intensity of the light is actually proportional to E square. Okay? So after all this, uh, it is time to take a look at some demonstration here. Okay, so here I have a setup, okay, which should I have emission of, uh, of uh, linearly polarized, uh, uh, linearly polarized microwave from the left hand side, which is the source. And I have a receiver, which is actually connected to the scope. You can see uh, uh, the result on the scope. You can see that indeed there are energy passing from this uh, source and uh, got accepted and uh, recorded by the, the scope, okay? Now, I have all those, okay, all of not so perfect, but those are metals, okay, which actually have uh, many, many uh, streaks uh, or, or, or many, many uh, little rot here. And uh, if, if my polarization or initial linear polarized wave is actually pointing in the toward, uh, uh, pointing in the vertical direction. So if I have, if I have my um, uh, polarizer arranged in this direction, can you predict what will happen to the readout on the scope? Will I see signal or not? How many of you actually think we will see signal if I arrange that? Uh, the, the, the electromagnetic wave is actually pointing, polarized in, in the up and down direction. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, on these four people think so. How many of you think nothing will, ha uh, nothing will, will change? Nothing, oh sorry, not, nothing will be observed by the, the scope. Okay, most of you actually think so. So that's actually really do the experiment. Look at what is happening. Can you see it? Do I see a signal? No, all the signals are canceled, right? Because, why? Because all the hard work of all those electrons in the, in the metal, they're like crazy, oh my god, this is a disaster, I'm going to oscillate up and down, cancel, 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 then you, it got canceled, okay? On the other hand, I can save all those electrons, right? So now I'm going to rotate this thing by 90 degree and see what is going to happen. Can you see it? Nothing happened, right? Because those electrons, oh my God, crisis is coming, but now there's nothing I can do because I cannot move up and down. Therefore, there will be no refraction, okay? So they have just to accept that, the fact that, okay, this electromagnetic field went through, okay? All right, and that's actually do something really interesting. Okay, look at this. So now I have I can actually, okay, I can actually make electromagnetic field completely destroyed, right? Because originally, the electromagnetic field is linearly polarized up and down in, in this direction, okay? If I have another plate, which is actually 45 degree, okay? Okay, so if I have a plate, which is 45 degree, and I, I put in another one here. Okay, it doesn't really work very well. Okay, the signal probably is too, too small and, uh, okay, how about we do this demo in a different way? So right now here, I have my computer here. Can you see my computer? You can see the screen, right? The screen is actually, made of LED, uh, 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 those are LED screens actually emit polarized light. And those are the polarizer, which is actually equivalent version of those metals, but actually uh, 
uh, arrange it in a really fine grained. Uh, 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 so so you, you cannot really see all those strips, uh, and, uh, and they look pretty transparent. And uh, but the idea is pretty similar. And the the uh, the poli pol polarizing axis is actually in the horizontal direction. The easy axis is in the in the horizontal direction. So let me put this here. Can you still see the screen? You cannot, right? But if I rotate this by 90 degree, you can see it, right? That is, that's, that is because all those, um, all those uh, light emitted from the screen is actually linearly polarized up and down direction, OK? So now, if I have another identical uh, 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 polarizer, uh, which I insert between these two. So now you cannot see anything, right? Because all the light is actually moving up, and, OK, pointing up and down. All, all the electric field is pointing up and down. And now if I insert another one, which is 45 degree, can you see something? You can see it. Why? That is because if I if I insert this uh, uh, additional polarizer, okay, like what I was discussing, it's going to only oh, it's going to take the projection, okay, to the to the uh, direction of the easy axis, okay, and if I have another one which is actually the easy axis is is pointing toward the x direction, then again, since this vector is tilted already by some theta degree then you can actually see some residual component which can pass through uh, the, sec uh, the second uh, polarizer, OK? On the other hand, if I remove this polarizer in between, then what is going to happen is that all the component is actually pointing to the y direction. Then you cannot see any component which pass through uh, this polarizer. So that's actually pretty interesting. And I can actually rotate this, and you can see that the magnitude is changing, right? Only when I have 45 degree, I see a maximum uh, intensity. Any questions? OK. Very good. So now. What I'm going to do is to discuss with you an interesting question, which was posted by Einstein. Einstein said that, as I said, God doesn't praise dice with the world. Right? So that's actually what he actually believed. So we can actually do a interesting experiment, which I have single photon source, OK? So what do I mean by single photon source? I can emit one photon at a time, just one, then the second one, and the third one, and they have then pass through some imaginary polarizer, OK? So, so that's suppose I have unpolarized the light with intensity I0, OK? So basically, after it passed through this polarizer with a axis pointing to the x direction, in this case, the x direction is pointing to, to, to this direction, OK? What you are going to get is that you are going to filter, OK, according from all those unpolarized direction, OK? You are going to filter only the light, which is actually parallel to the easy axis, right? So therefore, after the unpolarized light source pass through this uh, polarizer, you are going to have all the electric field pointing to the, the x direction, OK? That everybody can, can accept. And then of course, if I have a second one, which is actually in the, in the y direction, since there will be no component pointing to a y direction, you get zero electric field, OK? So that's very nice. So, so Einstein was really happy that, oh, that means Unpolarized light, maybe it's just 50% of the polarized light in the x direction and the 50% of the polarized light in the y direction, right? Because I, each time I emit one photon, and, uh, and the, the first half of them actually got stopped 
by the x direction, uh, 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 got stopped by the uh, uh, x direction e the axis um, uh, polarizer, and the second half got stopped by the second polarizer, right? So that probably makes sense, right? But how about, as we actually did in the, in the demonstration, how about we rotate the second polarizer by 40, uh, 45 degrees? What would be the intensity, right? But now, hey, you cannot split a single photon, right? Because a photon is a photon, how can I split, right? Because if I describe my unpolarized life as 50% linearly polarized in x, linearly polarized, uh, the other half is linearly polarized in y, then I am in trouble because I don't know how to actually calculate uh, uh, what is actually the, the uh, this uh, intensity. So, so basically, uh, um, maybe all of them actually pass through, or all of them doesn't pass through, right? Then actually we can do this experiment, and this is the result. What you are going to get is that the intensity is going to be I0 over 4. That is actually not 0 or I over 2. Right? So that means really the nature plays dice because uh, or say a single photon actually is equivalent to something which can be described by wave. Okay? So that actually gives us some connection, possible connection to quantum uh, mechanics because that means a single photon are not like a single object which is actually passing through uh, uh, all those uh, polarizers, but they actually act also like uh, 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 also like waves. Okay, so so that is actually something which we will follow up with uh, uh, later lectures, which when we talk about interference, etc., we are going to also discuss uh, related issues about the connection to quantum uh, mechanics. Okay, so. Today, we actually have learned uh, uh, about polarization, uh, linearly polarized, circularly polarized, and elliptically polarized electromagnetic wave, and also unpolarized light source. And we have learned about how to produce polarized electromagnetic wave with polarizer, right? Basically, have the unpolarized light source pass through a polarizer, you will have a polarized uh, uh, light. We didn't cover a quarter wave plate yet. We are going to cover that next time. And uh, also, next time, we will talk about how we actually can generate electromagnetic field. We have been talking about electromagnetic field for a long time, but how are they actually generated? It's an issue which we haven't actually touched. And uh, that is actually going to happen after the midterm uh, next week. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.